The biggest problem that we have as environmental activists is to fight the power of money. Because there's absolutely no question there are people in government who truly agree when I talk with them, they agree that this mine shouldn't go ahead or that dam shouldn't be built or um, Monsanto shouldn't be allowed to test its seeds here. But, but when this, uh, it's corruption really, but the might of money, the corporations that hold governments in their hands because of lobbying power and so forth, it, it's really frightening. If I'm allowed to change a few things, uh, if I just have this magic power, maybe the hardest of all, but what I really, really, really would love to change is the unsustainable lifestyle of everybody else. We just greedy. And I always think of Mahatma Gandhi saying, this planet can provide for human need, but not for human greed. And that is so right. Because I'm absolutely sure that never before in this space has there been a proper acknowledgement that we humans are not the only beings on the planet. So I want to bring into this space the voice of the chimpanzee, the animal I've studied for so many years with my dedicated team. And what I'm going to say simply means, this is me, this is Jane, because the chimpanzees have different ways of announcing their presence. So this is... It's a distance call, it's very appropriate for you guys up in the balcony. Today the world is in such a state that no one organization can do it alone. We need to collaborate, we need to get together, we need countries and individuals to work together to make this a better world so that we can be a little bit proud of what we leave for our children. One thing that I didn't ask you until this moment is that also you discovered the language of the chimpanzee. And well, the communication. Communication. I think but, it's different. <laughs> yeah. But for you, um, you use that in different conferences, right? Well, it's I, important. I, I demonstrate, like, um, if I'm having a tense meeting with, say, a, a male politician, you know. A dominant I, male politician. Yeah, so I, I say, would you like to know how a female chimp greets a dominant male? So then I act out that female is nervous and she crouches and she makes a submissive. <laughs> And then, you know, I tell the man, I say, now you've got to stand there looking important and big and swaggery. And, but then actually, you actually like the female. So uh, you, you pat her on the head and she embraces you. And they love it. For sure. They love it. And also, I also talk about male chimpanzees competing for dominance, standing upright, hair bristling, swaggering, shaking a fist. And I say to the audience, doesn't this remind you of some human male politicians? <laughs> also. <laughs> they laugh. Do you, you go back to Gumby once in a while, right? Twice a year. Yeah. How does it feel? How are things going there? No, I used to go out, but you know, I am 91 now. But you see the chimp when you go back? If they come down, yes. So last year, the, the only one I remember, because all the others have died now, and she actually came to the house and took me into the forest. Oh, yeah. It must have been a very emotional moment. Yeah, it was wonderful. Mm. Because there is an emotional moment, is when you uh, wonder gets free. That's a sanctuary for orphan chimps whose mothers have been shot. And it was the first day I met her, and she had nearly died, but then now she's healthy. She's going to be released onto this beautiful island, almost like being in the wild. And when she comes out of the traveling cage onto the island, she, you know, she comes, it gives me this 
not normal, a long, long embrace while she's looking around. And you know, she should have been doing that with the person who saved her life, Rebecca. And she does go and present to her, but everybody was amazed. Even if one dad didn't know you, she probably felt yeah. your love for yeah. them and yeah. everything you did for them. Yeah. And that you still continue to do. Mm -hmm. What do you want us to remember about you? About me? Yeah. That, um, that I never gave up. <laughs> <laughs> You're very convincing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, it's a great privilege.